Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Factorio Space Age. In our last episode, we were working on rocket turrets because we're going to need those to kill some stompers if and when they attack, which I guess since expansion is on, it's only a matter of time. I don't know where the nearest enemies are. I don't know how far my radar turrets are going. Um, I wish you could see radar coverage, actually, in terms of like which tiles are being actively scanned over time and which ones aren't because I kind of have no idea where that line is. Um, anyway, all that to say, we're gonna work on some rocket defenses here, and then we're also still kind of loosely working towards productivity module threes on Nalvis. Now that we have basically infinite ore, at least for now, I'm not running out of ore anytime soon with these big miners, and the rate of ore is gonna be more than enough Especially for copper and iron because of the productivity multiplication we're going on there. So as far as resources, the issue is going to be more in terms of my just my core circuit production. We might redo this, in fact, to make it better even a little bit more because these blue circuit makers were going a bit slow. But uh, yeah, what's, let's see. What is our quality module 3 up to? 0.5 per minute? That feels really low. That should be going up, not down. Um, I know variance is probably playing a role here. That feels pretty low. What's up, Code Green? Howdy, howdy. Uh, it shows up with a ghost in hand. Oh, wait, does it? Is it really that easy? Oh, uh, no, it doesn't. It does when you're zoomed in on the mini-map. Oh, the, you were just saying mini-map. Yeah, okay. So there's a feature where it's like, why wouldn't it show up on the bigger map? It would make a lot of sense for it, too. Especially because, here's my reasoning, especially because uh, Fulgora, and this is a great feature, and I want the same thing for radar is what I'm saying. Um, it does this. If you grab a lightning rod, in the zoomed out view, it shows you the lightning rod coverage. So having radars do the same thing would be really nice. I've actually wanted that for a while because modded radars are so big that they cover your entire minimap anyway. And so having the blue show up on the minimap is kind of useless because you can't really see where the edges are with like modded radars that have a huge effect. In fact, I wonder if if you were to place a legendary radar, is that yeah, basically the same problem is already here in vanilla now. Look, the legendary radar is so big, it just covers the whole mini-map regardless of kind of where you're putting it. You can't even really see the effect range. So that's a, that's another one of those, you know, lower priority things that I'd love to see them kind of make happen, but it would be nice. So we're going to make rockets on Gleba which requires us to deal with carbon, uh, which I have provided in provider chests. So, carbon and sulfur. Now, sulfur's also in provider chests. So, I believe the coal synthesis is just all we need to do. What I don't remember is what building is it done in. Chemical plant, and we need water. So, water is mostly in this northwest area, so maybe I make them over here. Yeah, I mean, Code Green, to, to some level, there is certainly the question of, like, does it even matter uh, when it comes to the, the radar placement stuff? But, yeah, I think, I think it's more a sense of... Um, consistency in the game and just quality of life of like being able to see how far your radar can reach would be kind of nice. But yeah, I do think it's lower on the priority list because, you know, I think in most cases you really just want to have enough radar coverage to make sure your things are working. It doesn't really matter that much exactly what the coverage is. 
All right, now this uses two solids and makes a solid. So let's have this side be beaconable. Yeah, it does seem that we are missing cliff explosives. Oh, which is a bummer. Um. that over there. Um, that means I need to put a request on the Gleba cargo network for cliff explosives. You saw a post on Discord about cliff hitboxes. <laughs> uh, what specifically? Because I've seen people talking about how it's weird that some things fit in certain spots near cliffs and other things don't. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you just saying that the new cliff hitboxes are better? Uh, what we do need is to automate chemical plants. I think we have everything we need. Uh, no, we're out of green chips again. What is going on with green chips? What is, what is the problem here? We just don't have enough copper, eh? Oh, okay. For some reason I thought we had enough, but that's clearly not the case. Um, also, these should be stack inserters. That would make life a little better. I guess I got so used to seeing stacked ore on Nalvis, I forgot that unstacked ore is not very dense. So then the issue here is just not enough copper. Okay. Got it. And it, it is literally as productive as I can make it right now. There's not really any improvements to be had on the productivity front. Uh, I guess technically blue circuit productivity is kind of like green circuit productivity in a weird way because I am ro launching rockets consistently. Every extra blue circuit we get for free is then a blue circuit we don't need for rockets. And in fact, we're out of blue circuits, which is scary. However, we also identified that this wasn't running for a long time, so that was probably the issue. So we'll just have to be patient. Yes. Yeah, I think it'll catch up. I don't really know for sure. Oh, we're not making lamps either. Well, that's sad. Um, I guess we could look at... Sorry. Processing units, not blue circuits. Um... For the last forever, we've never had an excess of blue circuits, <laughs> it seems. Hmm. I guess we had a few built up, otherwise we couldn't have consumed more than we produced in the last hour. So maybe, maybe we'll be okay. How many hours on this save? Uh, I want to say we're at like 70, yeah, 73. Which is crazy, because that used to feel like a lot for different saves, and now it feels like nothing for Space Age. You know I'm just going to do it this way. is less than that's a weird way to do that do you guys see what I just did that is it is funky so because of now, now there's a ghost cursor selection that's here to like put modules into buildings and stuff 
but I never really considered using this to put over in that rather than clicking on this and setting the filter from this window. This is where I would normally type in coal and do that. But now we can type it up here and click it over. And you can even do that quality. You can do that as a quality if I wanted like, you know, rare coal or whatever. Interesting. That's really weird. It's kind of breaking my brain right now. Um, go to 2000. Copy that condition. And there we go. Maybe 2000 is a bit much. Not sure. Uh, either way, do I have any prod modules here? I've got 50 prod twos. Okay, and explosives are half coal and half sulfur. So I guess this would be a reasonable place to put prod twos. Uh, and I'll just use speed ones because I think that's all I have. No, I don't even have those. Those are being produced though. We're just using them all for assembling machines right now. Okay, so we have coal and then explosives. Uh oh. What? <laughs> we just lost random bot to the to the lightning. It's funny. Um I mean the bot doesn't think it's funny, but I do. Alright, we'll get a little bit better lightning coverage there, I guess. I want to say this is all covered, right? Yeah, that's all fine. There's just these little... little gaps. Okay, back to what we were doing. So, these guys... Um, so explosives... So we can do right here. They need water as well. Ah, the cliff explosives. We should have cliff explosives soon-ish. In fact, we might already have them. It looks, yeah, there we go, there we go, okay. So I weirdly am going to request coal in these. And use the same, oh, nuts. I'm gonna need to rotate the water on the back because these are gonna get in the way. That should be fine still, actually. Oil is a bit tricky. Yeah, Nandrew, congratulations on your rocket silo. That's a very exciting point to get to. Oil is tricky, but uh, I'm glad that it's in the game where it is because the other planets are even trickier than oil. So it's a good, it's a good practice. picking 400 off the top of my head here. So explosives are running, and finally, how do we make rockets? One explosive, two iron plates, assembling machine. Cool. Um, so rocket, what's the craft time on that bad boy? Four seconds a piece. Go to 10 stacks, and I'll do two assemblers making it. And yeah, we're probably making more explosives than we need, but there we go, we got rockets. Now rockets, despite what you may believe, have zero splash damage. It is only explosive rockets that can friendly fire, right? I'm pretty sure rockets cannot friendly fire. It would just be explosive rockets that can. And, obviously, atomic bombs. Uh, don't do... Don't do atomic bombs, kids. Um, not on purpose, at least. So... What we're gonna do... 
is find the rocket turret. We will someday. And now what I want to do is we want to place it and then we need to place. How do we do this again? We place the ammo from here. Yeah. So you can actually get a turret. Placed ignore unlisted. I would like to ignore. No, oh, that's not blacklist. So we want to target strafers and stompers. And then we need, I'm just gonna do a requester chest for each one. I know that's a little wonky, uh, but bear with me. I will do a yellow inserter because I know I'm crafting those. I don't remember if I'm crafting green ones. And we're gonna request Rocket 20. And maybe that shouldn't be redone. Okay. So now we copy this and we just place that around the perimeter. I think. Um... Their range is not that big. Kinda hard to see. Um, oh, sorry, that's their minimum range. Oh, oh, I see it now. Never mind. Okay, that I was gonna say. I'm like that feels like a really small range. It's a it's a donut of a range. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that goes a lot. A lot further than I thought. Okay, there we go. I was going to say, I'm like, I swear their range was longer than the laser turrets, which is why I'm putting them behind the laser turrets. And, uh, yeah. And then with this advent, we're going to have some new RoboPort coverage we're going to need, um, but that's a separate point. Then what I'm trying to say, which is... attack like right here that would be unfortunate and I should do something about that um sorry what am I trying to say I want to do an explosive damage that's that's the thing that I was trying to get out of my brain so we'll do that Just keep throwing these around. Also, can we talk about how freaking cool the rocket turrets look? I may have done some some complaining about whether rocket turrets need to exist or not, but I certainly think they look really cool. We're gonna need some more robo ports. Yeah, like right here. Here. Because uh, not all those requester chests are in, in network. Let's make sure we have plenty of robo coverage. All these little guys. Does it? Ignore unlisted targets so they won't shoot the little wrigglers. The laser we're leaving the laser targets targets turrets to handle the wrigglers and the rocket turrets will handle anything bigger than that. They shoot 2.2 rockets per second, dealing what is soon to be more than 600 damage. Hmm. 
I don't know exactly how much damage they'll do. Oh, we're not making robo boards. Those aren't going to get built if I don't do something about that. I can't find it. Robo. There it is. <laughs> um, now, I know... I know some people have an auto mall, which is certainly something I might make someday, but boy, is this simpler than an auto mall. Just being able to paste a blueprint and pick what you want and move on with your life. Auto malls require some serious, some serious work. And I'm not the type of person that likes copying someone else's blueprint, though I'm sure other people, like I know Doc Jade came up with one. There's probably a dozen others I don't know about um, in terms of auto malls. But, yeah, why are we not... We're not making plastic anymore? So we've got an issue here with Yumako Mesh. Uh, we're not making the amount of Yumako we need. We're not making Yumako because we're not making Yumako. That's just... The way it is, huh? So... So what I need is probably away you know there is a no 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 play that order um way that we will use is one that allows me to do this. Bring the Yamako up to there, so then I don't have to worry about it. We are going to get Yamako spoiling on the end of that belt when we have enough plastic, but I'm willing to make that cost to keep the plastic flowing without fear. And that should be all we need to do, basically. And this is grabbing from the the main Yamako belt, which should never spoil. Because it's constantly being cycled through here. So yeah, that should work. Um, yeah, that was kind of a part of the base that I never loved, is we were only making plastic from Yamako that, that was not going to the Bioflux because we had too much. Um, but, yeah. You named your mall blueprint Hand of Creation. That's a good name for it. All right, so that should start red circuits back up again. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried about the overall production here on, on the Glaives. Um, I'm a little worried. I guess the only thing that can really make it better would be higher quality of all this stuff. Um, am I making uncommon bio chambers anywhere? I don't even remember where I'm making bio chambers. This is where the search does come in. I, I have two. Oh, that's just itchy, isn't it? Um, though, funnily enough, that's all that I need. <laughs> So we can make that actually quite a bit faster by doing that. And that is a mul multiplicative increase. Regardless of what you've done with modules, that's just flat out 30% faster. With no additional energy cost. Oh, you know what? I just realized that. That actually is a big deal on Gleba. Because it's like they're burners, you know? The, the nutrients are what fuel them, not electricity. So higher, quali higher quality of biochambers means less nutrients per item needed, which is 
true of other buildings with electricity, you just tend not to care. But in this case, I do care. It actually saves me nutrients. Um, yeah, and I... No, I did... <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. The UI weirdness of remote view can really uh, boil my grits sometimes. It's just, there's some weird stuff, like... I love remote view, but it there's some things that it does differently than when you're in person, and it really can can get frustrating. In my opinion, the best thing the game could do is make it so that the game feels very similar to play, whether you're actually there or not. Obviously, you can't bring things from your inventory into play, but being able to grab something with the left click, like rather than it disappear. Like, that feels like that should be something that you right-click. Or do the shift middle mouse button, you know, to remove it from your hotbar, like that. Like, one of those two things should be the thing that makes the X, not left-clicking. Left-clicking making making the X and bots come pick it up feels really odd to me. Um, I, I, I would prefer if left-click picked it up like pipette. But, anyway. Uh, yeah, these are just way too fast now. We just don't have enough bio. Uh, you might go mash. No, left click doesn't remove it, it picks it up. It, to where you can then place it somewhere else. Like, it brings it into the mouse. Yes, it, it does have the effect of removing it from the chest you're clicking on, but it also... The, the thing that you generally care about is doing something with it, not just getting it out of the chest. So it's hard because it does two things, one of which you can't do if you're not in person, one of which you can do, and they've chosen to make it do the removing but not the putting into the mouse. It could do both if you were in remote view. It could only pipette it, and then you have to do a right click to remove because that in person it removes half. I don't know. There's It's really tricky. They, by adding these new features, they've made a lot of... Uh, sticky situations where they had to make design decisions that are probably going to be unpopular no matter what they did, right? Like, there are some people who probably love it the way it works, and there are some people who don't love it, and I don't think either person is wrong, and they've just introduced a lot of those situations with Space Age. Ah, uh, man, I do not envy the developers. I think they've done a really good job, I'm just going to say that. Um, I'll do one more research, because I think we can afford it, and we're going to need it. But yeah, I, I think that what I'm trying to say is I think the developers have done a really good job of making the design decisions they've made. I don't think they've done a perfect job, and I do think there's still a lot of little ways that the game can be improved. I also think there are a lot of places where, like I said, they've introduced preferential... Oh, I don't even know what the phrasing of this would be. They've introduced areas where some players are not going to love how it works, and some players will, and there's no definitive right answer. I think there's more of those spaces now, which unfortunately means I think the average person, how do I say this? In a way that is capturing what my brain is saying. It's like the average person will have more complaints about Factorio than Factorio Space Age than they had about Factorio pre-Space Age. And I don't think there's a way they could have done it and not had that be true. So like, it's kind of like the you have to break an egg to make some omelets idea. It's like, I think they had to, to make some complaints to do the things they wanted to do for Space Age. And I don't think there's really a way around it. And the, the unfortunate truth is, you know, that's just development of games, I guess, to some level. But, I do think there are some places where they've made decisions that could have resulted in less complaints and less, you know, headaches. And there, 2.1 is certainly going to be a thing. So I, I have, I have hope, I have faith uh, that some of these complaints will be ironed out as well. Because truly, I don't have a ton of them, and most of the complaints I have are much more minor things like that. Um, cause the 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 example. Um, 
that I think a lot of people have run into is specifically on a space station. A lot of people didn't know how to even build these things. Like, okay, I want to build a solar panel and they would click on it and left clicking does nothing here. So this is a good example where like, yes, it's technically consistent. Um, why left click doesn't do anything, but for most players, they click on, they open their inventory, they grab a solar panel with left click and they build it with left click. And that's just how it works. And so like, this is a good example where an exception I think would actually make more sense. Rather than following your rules really strictly and saying screw you to people that don't understand them, I think it would make more sense if left click just grabbed the solar panels pipetting for you. Rather than forcing you to separately pipette right here. Um, so that that's an example where like I actually think sometimes the the hard and fast rules are less helpful than they are helpful. Um, and I know a lot of players, including myself, got confused with that particular interaction right there that I just showed you. So it's like, yeah, but at the same time, by adding in left clicking working there, then you're introducing an inconsistency where left clicking doesn't work in remote view. You know, like here, you know, left clicking does something different than it would do on the space station. And so then players are going to complain about that. So it really is tricky. Like I, I think the devs have done a pretty, pretty dang good job. Uh, that was an old blueprint that we don't need anymore. Also, Waskly, there are always valid reasons why things are the way they are. That doesn't mean complaints are invalid. However, uh, again, back to players have different preferences. So there can be there can be like and I think that's kind of the point of what I was saying is like many of the d decisions they had to make in Space Age are decisions that intrinsically cannot be universally popular because of players having preference. And so you're going to have more places where, oh, this is the best way we could make it, but only 70% of players actually prefer it this way and 30% would prefer it the other way. There's going to be a lot more situations like that where they might have made the best decision they could make, but it's a little bit of a lesser of two evils situation rather than a this is just a great decision. Um, and I think there they just were more places like that in Space Age. So I, I personally have run into more little snags and based on a lot of conversations I've had with other people like on the podcast and stuff, it sounds like some other players have run into some snags too that I, I don't know if there's a way they could have made the game where that wouldn't have happened. But I also am like, it'd be nice to not run into the snags. You know, like there's still snags. There's still things that might, you know, bother me or somebody else when they're playing. So it's like, it's hard because you want to, you want to have your cake and eat it when you're playing a game, right? Like. I'm not the developer. I'm not the one who had to solve those problems. I just know that I'm running into something that might be sort of annoying, but like as the developer, you have to somehow try to make everybody happy when you know that's not going to be possible. So all that to say, I have nothing but love and respect for the Factorio devs, and I think they've solved these problems really well overall, um, despite what I sometimes complain about. Now, what I'm thinking about right now despite talking about all that stuff, is how to freaking make prod module threes. Because we have to deal with biter eggs spoiling in the midst of our quality upcycling uh, Gambletron nonsense. So our previous Gambletron, we already talked about, it's too small and it, it can't handle biter eggs. So we need to upgrade this design. The question is, do I want to just use the same design and use the same circuitry and change it to you, what if I used sushi? Is it possible and is it plausible? <laughs> I could just use a sushi belt that as long as the belt itself is long enough, it could always contain, by the pigeonhole principle, it'll always contain enough ingredients for something to be made before the belt would back up. No, no, because you could get unlucky with the recycling and get too much of something, right? Yeah, technically you could fail to get a superconductor enough times in a row that you have too many of the other things. So it doesn't quite work. 
it would work if if all the ingredients had four or greater because then you're guaranteed a superconductor every time but as it is, we do have an actual percentage chance. Now, obviously, if you just made the belt long enough, it would cover all cases with the 99.99 whatever percent probability. Um, so we could do some sort of sushi belt. <laughs> as long as you don't cook the eggs, sushi is allowed. Yeah, yeah, raw, raw eggs to go with the raw fish. Um, I just, I don't think that's the way I want to do it, but it is possible. We could, I think I was talking about this in the previous episode when I first was thinking about solutions. We could also make it so that we have enough production that statistically we just have very little to no spoilage because we produce it fast enough that on average we are getting you know, the ingredients to make a rare or an uncommon fast enough that the spoilage is never really an issue. Okay, that went away so fast. Now here's another, like, ah, I want to see what that alert was. There's no alert history. Where was that attack? I want to go there. I, and I can't. Ah. I don't like that. It makes me feel rushed. When, when I see an alert down here, because if I don't click on it fast enough, it just disappears forever. I know it was probably just turrets getting damaged, so it's not that important. But I like to show up my defenses whenever they get damaged. And I actually have no way to go do that now. Um, anyway, I am slightly concerned that these aren't getting built. Seems for good reason. What's happening here? What's going on? There's copper. Um. How did. How did these get iron in them? Now there's. There's a puzzler. get iron. These have copper in them? No. I guess if iron ore was on this belt, it would go left. That's kind of weird, but true. I just don't know how the bacteria would ever have expired on this belt. Because it goes straight... Oh, you think if the bioflux was... No, no, no. Bacteria is always made at full. No, no, no. I believe bacteria is always made at full, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, it's definitely made at full because that's at 93% and the bacteria is being made at 99 point whatever. So, so really, I, I can't understand how this would have ever turned to iron before it gets to here that's just less than one minute travel time we have enough inserters it's not like it ever backs up because um, this is also ditching all of the excess if we have too much I'm actually I, I'm, I'm guessing it's when I replaced the inserters no but that doesn't make sense Again, one of those weird Gleba things. Just hashtag just Gleba things. I have no I have no explanation for how that could have happened. It expired in the machine. Um is that possible? I don't think so, because these are constantly outputting and that's constantly flowing. So these should never be waiting to output. Uh the chests can't get full because I trash copper or iron once it's past 2,000. So the chest can't get full. Because, like, basically, you think about it this way. Ignore the bacteria that goes left. 
Bacteria's always made it 100%. It's always open to place on this belt. And if it doesn't go left, it goes right. So, and once it's gone left, it can never switch back. So like all that matters is bacteria that's placed here and then it ends up getting split over here for whatever reason. At that point, it's at like still 90, 96% freshness or whatever. It's gonna flow on this belt. This belt never stops to here. And that's the only place it could have spoiled is from this point to this point. And based on the fact that we recycle all the extra ore, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. Can't figure it out. The, the Sherlock Holmes in me wants to figure it out, but I, I can't. Hey, Imra Karnuk, Karnuk, I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy my spaghetti style and causing problems like this. It's this, the stack inserters going back to the belt should have a blacklist for ore. It could grab before your red trashing spoilage. Um, let me read that again. The stack inserters going back to the belt. Um, these? It was the input that expired in the machine, not the output. I thought you guys were talking about the output. The output can never expire because it gets dumped onto this belt. That's what I was arguing for, and I stand by that. Maybe you guys were talking about the input spoiling. Is that what you were getting at? If so, then that could be possible. It's still less, less likely, but if we ran out of bioflux, then the input could spoil. That would make sense. So we need a blacklist. Okay, you guys were not clear about that. You can't say something that could be two things. Like right now, actually, it's gonna happen because <laughs> I'm out of bioflux. So whenever rockets come, we have a bioflux issue. I need to, I need to solve that. Um, but that's a separate problem in this. Yeah, so that's a whole nother thing about Gleba is like, oh, you thought about the outputs expiring but you sure didn't think about the inputs expiring, did you? You know, and that's a whole issue too. Oh, goodness. Okay. So these will blacklist ore, so ore never gets on this belt. It'll just get yoinked directly. And then there's still ore getting uh, handled on the end of the belt as well. So we should be okay with all of that now. And I guess the main issue is that we're filling this up too fast. So I wonder if I just slow down this inserter to only grab four or maybe, maybe three at a time. It's kind of like I just need the rate to be a bit more equalized in how fast this grabs bioflux. Maybe even that's too fast. Maybe we go down to two. Because the problem is when a rocket shows up, it just takes all the bioflux. And then that causes issues in other parts of the base. And I just want it to be more consistent. Okay. So I think we're back to okay now. It was certainly the input expiring and then this was filtering just iron to the right. Uh, machines will back up with ore in them? Wait, how? These are trashing it. The spoilage getter rid of overs are now also ore getter rid of overs. So they're getting rid of all the things that can spoil. So I think we're okay. And that fixes the possibility of uh, iron ore ending up over here. Which had stopped this mess. Now, we are slowly reducing, which means... Uh, oh, plastic's the issue again. Okay. 
me more about that. This is just too slow. Is that the situation? Um, seems like it. Add some more laser turrets there. And then... Does that just mean we don't have enough? Yumako. Okay, wait a second. Now this is where... Oh, right. So confusing. Because in, in the normal game, map view is a separate view from looking at the player. But when you're in remote view, you're already in map view. So you, you just zoom out to get to map view rather than hitting M. So there's a weird muscle memory thing that changes depending on what view you're in. Um, if I had overgrowth soil, this would be a lot simpler. But I don't. No. There's really not much space left over here that I can use. Wait. No, that- Yumako's the green one. Now, why did they have to go and confuse us like that? <laughs> Jelly Nut is the purple, but then that ends up making a green substance, which is the jelly. And then Yumako is the green on the map, but then that goes and makes a red thing that turns into a reddish mash. Why, why, must, why must they do that? Why wouldn't they make the, the redder color go with the redder fruit? That's really funny, actually. Maybe they did it for visual distinction. Um, that's kind of... Feels kind of reverse. So... But where do I put more Yumako? That's the real question. C can I build on... No, that's the wetland. That's the one I need overgrowth soil for. Um, hmm. Looks like I could fit like a couple more trees right here. Just to mess with me personally, Dave, you must be right. They must be out to get me. I mean, honestly, there's really... Like, until I do overgrowth soil, I'm kind of just straight up limited on my... Yumako amount. Maybe 500 isn't large. Maybe we do need to go higher. Whatever, whatever amount it is, it needs to be a large enough amount that over the life cycle of an entire growth harvest, uh, you know, whatever that timing is, does it tell me? Five minutes. Over the course of five minutes, basically our production time is lagged by five minutes. So if I went from needing zero of the Yumako to needing the full amount that I might ever need, we're five minutes from now actually capable of sustaining that. So you need enough storage to handle five minutes of your usage time, whatever that is. Um, or I should say whatever the differential between low usage and high usage is, what that rate amount, maybe you know, you know, at low usage you use 30 a second, at high usage you use 60 a second, so the difference is 30. So then you need 30 a second times 5 minutes of storage in this chest to compensate. But I think I just don't have enough, yeah. So how hard is overgrowth soil? That's the next question. Have I even researched it yet? No, I have not. So let's queue that up. So basically, I just need to bring... I mean, 
yeah, I just I just need biter eggs. So that's nothing else to it. Um, fun. Okay. So currently, I don't think I have a space station capable of doing that without the biter eggs spoiling. This is making the rounds probably every 20 minutes. And it goes now this Vulcan Escalaba. I could switch that. Or, or can I? Can I switch that? I can, I can. Yeah, I could go now this Glaba Vulcanus. Um, Now there's a thought, Waskily. What does it stack to? I guess that's what will determine whether I do that or not. Because right now my Gleba is already struggling for blue circuits to send rockets. So I think it depends on how expensive the soil is. 60, 67? What? Why? 67. <laughs> okay, I guess it's 67. Um, I guess that's a thing. Uh oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I realize the math that it is 200 thirds. Uh, that does not answer the question of why is it 200 thirds instead of just 100 as the rocket capacity. That just feels really... I, I'm like trying to grasp a realistic gameplay reason why that's not just a hundred. <laughs> Does it really change something? Is that, was it too strong to be able to send up a hundred per rocket? I just, I don't know, that feels... Most of the other ro rocket capacity things have felt like I get where they're going with this. This one feels very random. Or why not 50? You know, like, why not 50 or a hundred? Why a weird number? Is it a weird number on purpose? Did they want it to feel weird? Did they want you to wonder? I'm trying to like reverse engineer the the idea and I, I can't come up with a good one. Anyway, all that to say the overgrowth has terrible rocket capacity. So you need like a lot of rockets to send back overgrowth soil. Um I mean Dave, I understand that it could be calculated automatically for modded stuff and they would want that to be in the game i would also imagine they would they would and did do a manual pass on every single item because there's not that many items in vanilla i mean like less than 200 i don't know how many there are in vanilla nowadays but it's like you could pretty easily look at every single number of, of rocket capacity and make sure it makes sense and i feel like for these ones you would have thought they'd change the 67 down to like a 50 and this one up to like a 20 or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they like the weird numbers. I, I again, I, I don't really know. It's just, it strikes me as odd. Um, anyway, to the previous comments, do you need to buffer the fruit? Uh, probably not. It's just nice because then it provides for a longer capacity to have an unusual consumption rate if that makes sense. It's the same idea as buffering in anywhere else. And the overall usage time, even if I'm buffering 700 in there, it's only gonna add a minute or two to the spoilage of the most spoiled pieces. So it's not, like I'm still getting more value out of buffering 700 Yamako fruits than buffering none, even though it does technically mean they're slightly more spoiled when they get made. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, basically, I'm doing the same thing. I wired my harvesters to um, to work only when I need fruit 
It's just I'm claiming I need fruit if I have less than 700 stored up rather than, you know, the belt isn't full or whatever. So how do I do biter eggs? Do I change the schedule? Let's change the schedule of the Derpamu. Um, let's just do it. Um, and uh, let's see. Do I want... Okay, so it's going to go to Nalvis. Right now, I'm forcing a 10-minute wait on Nalvis. And that was because we weren't having enough time to actually produce... Um, whatchamacallit? Uh, the bullets that we needed for the trip. So it was kind of necessary. But that's going to be biter spoilage time now. But maybe that's okay. They do have a 30 minute timer. So maybe we'll be fine. Maybe maybe we'll just, we'll add a, let, let's try it. What's the worst thing that happens? Everything blows up? I've seen worse. Um, okay, no group assigned. Spider egg. What's this rocket capacity? 500? Oh my. Um, no, we're gonna minimum payload this and only do... How many do we need per soil? We need 10 per soil? Um, this is gonna be a slow process though. Maybe 500 feels like a lot though. Am I making enough? How many biter eggs am I making? Uh. Oh, we're making a lot. Okay. We're making 9,000 an hour. So 500 per trip actually seems relatively fine. Yeah, yeah. The worst thing that happens is the biters take over the platform and start an intergalactic war. Uh, we are gonna we are gonna worry about that though with laser turrets. Don't worry. Don't worry, we are gonna worry. Uh, so let's just do it, 500. We'll do one rocket full. Yeah, exactly, the 50 soil is only five tree spots. Like I said, it, it, this is just gonna be the slow burn. You know, after a few hours, we'll have enough soil to do something valuable. Uh, it's certainly not gonna fix our problem in the next few minutes or even two hours, probably. But on Nalvis, it will request 500 eggs. Then, on Gleba, we need to request... Is it set to unload on Gleba? It is, right? Otherwise, we would have had all sorts of issues. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten the calcite from it if we didn't do that, so... So here we request 500 eggs. Now, the real question... Is this... Is this do you want aliens? Is this, this is what you get. Uh, or this is how you get aliens, yeah. Uh, the real question is, what do they come out of when they when they spoil? Do they all just come out of the, the core building? What if the core building was surrounded with a bunch of... Does it just find the closest spot it can spawn biters? I'm actually curious. Um, we also learned through sad truth from... Uh, who was it on the Discord? I think it was Fiplet. Or no, was it Alor? Someone was experimenting for us. When 100 biter eggs spoil, or maybe we talked about this in the last stream, 100 biter eggs do not spoil into 100 biters. They only spoil into four or something. Technically, I think in the code, it's supposed to spoil into 20, but they might even do some collision checks and they don't even spawn into 20. So theoretically, this could be 100 biters because it's one biter per five eggs. But when they, when they all spoil in a chest, they don't even... Um, like when they spoil it in the same moment, they don't spawn as many as it should be. So I don't really think I need to worry about that. Um, so I just realized not all of our rocket turrets have power, so I need to do a quick check. Make sure. 
All the inserters have power. Power, power, power tower. Powers for the towers of rockets, turrets. Um, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, it might have been Lodro. Okay, so the biter eggs are gonna get here. And then, after that, we need to then quickly process um, into overgrowth. Water. And then we do something like this. And then we do this. And I'm just gonna add as we'll just request all 500 biter eggs so they'll end up over here. Um, the soil, 500 of the nutrients. 100 seeds, 100 of the other seeds, 50 of the other soil, ah, why not 100, why not 1,000, we'll just make sure that the eggs are fully utilized as quickly as we can once they get here, and Jonesy? Did we name did we name someone Jonesy? And then we'll put some uh, guarantees that everything goes okay. And then we need water. Which ooh, look at that. You don't normally get water that easily. You do need to make offshore pumps. Sweet. Also, how's Stone Patch doing? Sixty-nine thousand. Not great. Ah, the alien references. I, uh, you guys can hate me all you want, but I do not know the alien references. I've seen Alien. I've seen Alien Two. I've even seen the third one that I don't think is called Alien Three. Um, but I don't remember much about them because it was a very long time ago, and it's not like I've watched them religiously or something. Alright, so the next trip should have the eggs. Do we have the eggs with us? No. It will be... Okay, Now it's about to grab eggs from Navis and then go to Glava. So we're about to see... Oh, you're right, it's aliens. Right, my, my B, my B. <laughs> it's the plural of alien. <laughs> Aliens 2, the second. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so this is going to grab the eggs from Nalvis. It will wait for 10 minutes. That's definitely pushing it, but I think we'll be okay. Because we're keeping the eggs on a... Like, what are the most spoiled A? Oh, God. They're getting down to 20 minutes at their most spoiled already? Eee, that's a little risky. Um, maybe this needs to go a little faster. Why am I... Shouldn't this... I did some weird crap here. What did I do? You know, I don't know if you guys are ever this way. When you're doing something, it makes all this sense. You feel brilliant. It feels like great ideas. And then future you comes back on a different day and you're like, what the hell was this person thinking when they set this up? Like, why didn't I just 
have all of them run constantly. Was it because I was worried about bioflux consumption? Because these do not consume bioflux quickly. Um, and they're already all running constantly. So why am I not just constant? Also, I'm not outputting the, uh, the spoilage, which is a different problem that I just now realized. Um, but why am I not constantly outputting the eggs? And then when this chest gets too full, we start burning the extras. Why am I not doing that? Does anyone know? Is, is there a good reason why I'm not doing that? Or is this truly just an act of insanity that past Crydax set up here? Because then that guarantees we have the freshest eggs possible at all times. Rather than what I'm doing right now, which is this weird siphoning off some if I need to. Um, as to Waskly and Aelor saying, why do I have a chest? That's because you might want more than 500 eggs at one time, which is all these have. Um, so there's a little, again, it's the same argument as with the the uh, the jelly nut, no, the Yumako mesh, where it's like having a little bit of a buffer makes some amount of sense. Um, but what makes less sense is the, the method in which I'm doing this. Really, this... <laughs> this is some serious... This is some grade A spaghetti that we cooked up here that is totally unnecessary. Um, yeah, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna... Well, I guess I can just turn off that. We're just gonna run these constantly. Uh, the outputs. I'm going to disconnect whatever the heck this chaos is. What is this even connected to? Inserter? Yeah. Ditch all that. Uh, this guy... These, these don't need to be connected. I don't even know. Uh oh, what is that connected to? Is that connected to a what? What? I really struggle sometimes to see what things are connected to. Is that connected to the inserter? What? Oh, that's going all the way to the power pole. That's what it was. Okay, there we go. Um... Is that, does anyone know if there's a mod that highlights uh, things that are connected to the circuit network you're currently of the color you're currently holding? Um, anyway, uh, if biter eggs are greater than, uh, you know, we can do 500 here, then we just start ditching them. It can be that simple. And then that always takes the most spoiled. And then... As far as spoilage itself... We'll, we'll see less spoilage if the stack size is one. Ah, uh, no, that's not true, sorry. Because we'll still randomly grab an almost spoiled bioflux from time to time. So then we will end up with spoilage on this belt. That's fine. We just need a filter. Get rid of it. In fact, no, we're not going to... It's going to be such a small amount of spoilage, I'd rather just burn it. Um, which I can do like this. Okay. So, what this should result in is a constant flow of our potential biter eggs. Buffering 500 of them here, which I probably should increase that number a little bit now that they won't be buffered. Oh, that's what it was. That's why I did this. Technically, this will be less fresh. Is that true? Yeah, the previous version, I remember now. Okay, so past Crydax was slightly less crazy. I still think this is fine. But the reason that, that was slightly less crazy is we were kind of buffering the other 500 in the outputs of these, if you think about it. And we weren't asking for them unless we had a need for them. So that was kind of our way of buffering a thousand eggs rather than 500. 
and it actually was keeping the 500 that were locked in these fresher. But at the end of the day, I think this is probably just a better system. Man, what chaos. Um, now, on that note, uh, the Derpamu should have some ticking time bombs already good to go up here. Here we are. So these are already 17 minutes remaining, and then we've still got five minutes left here. So that's going to be down to 12 minutes. It certainly is going to give us a run for the money. Uh, and we have no laser turrets, do we? Oh, thank goodness. Okay. The problem is I have no concept of where the biters might spawn if they were to decide they wanted to make their home on this beautiful little space station so they could lay eggs in unsuspecting people's faces. Um, I know they don't lay the eggs in the faces, don't. Well, actually me. Um, but yeah, I don't really know where they'd end up spawning. Given I put all the turrets over here, they're probably going to spawn right here where I don't have turrets. But the range is long enough, that should be okay. I guess I could fit one in here. In here. Okay. Well. We shall see what we shall see. I'm hopeful that that works. And... And this should, yep, right about now, start taking some out. Perfect. Uh, I don't want to force it to leave because I want to see if the normal schedule works. I mean, I guess maybe your point is that these will end up being slightly less... Like, my new system should result in slightly fresher eggs, so I should give it a benefit on this one because they're slightly less fresh eggs, but I... Looking at the numbers, I think it's okay. Uh, I think we'll be okay. It should only take about one to two minutes to transition to the other planet. We should have at least ten minutes left by the time we get there. And the, the soil doesn't spoil, even though it rhymes. Uh, so that's not a problem. You know, someday we're going to make prod threes. Oh, man. What kind of damage do our rocket turrets deal? I just, I'm worried about Gleba. Gleba is the problem child. Uh, we deal 760 damage a hit now. That's pretty significant. 760 times 2.2. That's like 1500 DPS. That's decent. Still not as much as I kind of thought it would be. And these have no explosion resistance, so they are going to, like, kill a stomper in two seconds. So that's not bad. Um, the mediums are going to be a bit worse, and the bigs, again, doubly worse. But between the lasers and the rockets, I think we'll be okay. Uh, the rockets are ignoring non-big enemies, so we should be okay on that front. I mean, I guess if there's a bunch of strafers and a stomper, you know, it, it won't murder everything Im immediately. But we've got at least enough rocket tur turret coverage that there should always be two or three shooting on any particular attack. Plus all the laser turrets, which should be more than capable of handling the, the little wrigglers. We've got a ton of damage upgrades. Yeah, we're dealing 122 laser damage a shot, so that's, I mean, that's one-shotting the smalls, two-shotting the mediums, and four-shotting the bigs, so I think that should be okay. All right, Derpa Moo's just about to leave. Eggs are at 13 minutes. I know the lightning guns are cool, but I have to do more work on Fulgora to make them, and that requires me to do more work on Fulgora. <laughs> so I haven't done it yet. Um, 
All right, how am I gonna do this? So bite her eggs. really is weird how we're gonna get a random amount of freshness from it. I really wish you could... I guess what we could do... This feels... No, because then if we request too many, we'll get... Yeah, this is... The best solution would be what other people have already talked about, which is don't take them out of the nests unless you need them. That does require more than five nests, I think. You know, if we had been able to capture, if we like captured all of these, we'd probably be okay. Um, but with only five nests, I like my buffering idea and I'll go with it for now. But that we are going to end up with really a timer of like 25 minutes rather than 30. Um, then it'll take them a couple minutes to get here. So then from inception... To making prod threes, we should be fine for making the prod threes themselves. The issue is the higher quality ones once we've recycled. You don't see a base capable of supporting that much prod three crafting? Do you not see how many quality threes we're making of the epic variety? And I've got Plenty more production where that came. We're not using anywhere near all of our plates, so I can I can get more circuits pretty easily. I actually think our base is capable of quite a lot, despite its scrappiness. Now that we've got foundries and beacons and st and you know stacking of four, I think we actually have quite a bit. Um. So yeah, the the real issue is just the quality eggs from recycling. That's the, that's the problem to solve here. So when we get an epic egg, we don't have a guarantee of when we will get the other epic ingredients. So there is a chance that that epic egg spoils. Now, when that epic egg starts its journey, I assume it starts at full 30 minutes. So we just want a world where we're making... And the other ones are certainly crafting fast enough. Maybe this is where we use a design that's more like this original one that we set up. Um, because this way all the eggs end up in a chest and we can use... Use them together. I might do a design that's more like this. Because this guarantees... I don't know. Does it guarantee anything? <laughs> or is that just some of the same problem? Because... What rates are we getting right now? Quality module. Oh, we're an hour and 20 minutes in this video? Wonderful. Um, why is this so much worse? I feel like that's just bad luck, right? These have been running. Uh... Oh, we got issues, baby. I was worried about this, and it has come true. Uh, these are too slow. To handle these two having epics in them. And the recycler having epics. Does that make any sense? It isn't finishing? It's not? If it's not, then we got a problem. So that's certainly a separate issue. Oh, the derpamu also arrived. We should check on our biter eggs. I think it's... It looks like it's working. Um, it will switch recipe. Did we get rid of all the eggs? That's the first thing to check. Yes, no biter eggs left. Okay. Uh, Gleba. 
Spider eggs down to nine minutes, but things are being produced. I guess the issue is if... Oh, I already know what the issue is going to be. We're going to run out of seeds to request. In fact... Do we have... Yeah... Mm, no, that's not going to work. We need to have the same condition on these guys. So this way we won't use up all the seeds. Um, but that does mean we actually will have biter egg spoiling right here once we run out of seeds. So that's worth remembering. Okay, but there we go, overgrowth, yay! <laughs> I meant, uh, ah, I meant to grab it. There we go, okay. So now, beep, 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 ta-da. This will get us hopefully enough fruit to maintain what we want. That actually isn't as many as I thought it would be. Wait, are these just not being built because there's, like, stromatolites? Oh, okay, that's interesting. I would have presumed it would give you the green light even if there was a destructible on top. I think that's true. Well, they, these, oh, okay. So I'm missing out on a couple harvestable spots because I didn't know the stromatolites were a separate issue. They harvest the trees automatically, but not the stromatolites, which makes some amount of sense because they're not trees. I just hadn't really thought to look for that before. So that opens up a couple more spots as well. Uh, where's my fourth one? Here, this one. Any stromatolites in your purview? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Well, that being said, um, okay, so we need to be done with this YouTube recording soon because we're an hour and 22 minutes in, but I do want to think a little bit about this egg spoilage issue. Someone else had mentioned just making higher quality eggs because eggs recycle into eggs, so we can just make we can kind of make the higher quality eggs on demand to supplement the ones we already have, and then we just shoot whatever biters end up spawning. For whatever reason, I really don't like the shooting. Like, I kind of want to design a system where they never spoil, but does it really matter? Our laser turrets are going to kill them so quickly that, like, I really don't think it's that big of a deal if we just let them spoil when it happens. And when they spoil, that just means we will need to on purpose produce some of the higher quality eggs when needed. So I think I'm just gonna design basically a normal system that will work for the other modules too. It just will have the ability to add in the higher quality eggs where they're needed, when they're needed, because some of them have already spoiled. And then I don't have to worry about any of the other problems. And we're gonna make a bigger system. I think I'll make it this size, but with only one set of belts and combinators and such. Um, how will I, will I use a sushi loot? I don't know how I'll do this. The reason this works so nice is because it's all accessible from the chest. Is it basically because these are running? I thought we did the math. Did, didn't this work out? Well, I guess not. One of these running. Oh, did I not math out the thing running itself? Because these produce a crafting speed after accounting for productivity of about six. 
which is meaning this is producing about three fourths of a recipe which then runs this for three fourths of the time and then one fourth of that also gets recycled that still doesn't add up to one i'm not sure where the extra is coming from oh this one has its own productivity so it's making 1.5 times a fourth of three fourths which is 3 sixteenths times 1.5 is 4.5 sixteenths plus the other ones, which is 12 sixteenths, which is 16.5 sixteenths. I believe that is greater than one, and that is the math of why this uh, is filling up. It's literally just that much too much. I think I did the math right. It's also easily possible I made a mistake in there, but... So the Gambletron 3000 is flawed in many ways. Look at, oh my god, look at all these extras. You know what, I need to stop feeding it. I, I need to, ah, we need to just cut, um, what's the best way to do this? I'll cut one from each of these. So that will slow down the input into the system and then that will help catch up with all the extra stored up stuff eventually without breaking anything else for now. So... Why not produce on purpose high quality circuits so high quality eggs will always get crafted with? Um, yeah, that's the other option is to separately make quality loops for all the ingredients to simplify this and then we wouldn't have to worry about the biter egg problem in particular. Um, but then we'll need a quality loop for blue and red circuits, which we can do. It just means four quality loops instead of one. And you do lose out on the, if you force high quality on this, you lose out on the quality chance to upgrade. So it's, it would almost be better to like halfway force the quality, yeah. but then you get into the whole quality rabbit hole, which I'm sure you guys know all about. Uh, so I think it's just easier to either do it all or do nothing. Just quality loop the iron plates. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll just make everything legendary from minute one. How about? <laughs> oh, this game is so fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, the, the quality stuff, I think, is really complicated. And I love it, but it's also really complicated. So I think in this case, for now, we're going to stick with the... We start with common ingredients, and we... Uh, just loop everything from there. At some point, we might do a base, and probably not ever in this playthrough, but at some point, we might do a base where we focus on making higher quality ingredients at each step along the chain, and then deal with the chaos that that creates. Um, but that certainly does create chaos. It's not something that you can just easily do on demand. Now what we could do on demand is instead we we take like we basically only make epic red circuits and epic blue circuits and then we use all of those to only make epic prod threes. But then we're just doing what we're doing here one step earlier and that actually doesn't really change all that much. Um, it does in the sense that you can use the rejects to go do something else but then you might mess with those ratios. So it's it really, there's no, there's no way to cut it that makes it simple, that's for sure. And I really like that. As much as I still have some weird, not weird, but some hot takes about quality and I don't actually know if it's <laughs> all, all good, I really love playing with it. It's really fun. Uh, it's such a fun concept to deal with. And the Gambletron... I mean, think of how many players have made their own version of the Gambletron. Like, that alone is really fun. And there's so many different ways to make it. So many circuit-controlled versions, so many non-circuit-controlled versions. I just, I think it's really cool. And it's all to do something you don't even have to do to play the game or beat the game. And that's really cool. So, I like quality. What can I say? But yeah, we're going to have to call it an episode here. I will... Let's see... 
take a picture. Wow, these rocket turrets are like almost invisible. <gasps> Gleba being damaged? Oh, oh, it was just biter eggs. Okay. I got really excited and thought we were gonna get to see rocket turrets doing their thing. Um, yeah, they certainly don't. Yeah, there's there's a good picture of one. I want to see one shooting though. I bet they look really cool. But uh, yeah, for those of you from future YouTube, we'll have to call it an episode here at an hour and a half. Oh my god. Sorry, everybody. Uh, as always, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next episode.